Okay, today I'm going to define DNA. So what is DNA? DNA is nothing more than a molecule. It's a molecule. And how it acts as living in the cell, how it transfers the inheritance. So this is a very crucial topic and even scientists cannot explain it well. So we are just going to talk a little bit about the DNA as to pass or test about to have the concept that is given in our books. So I'm going to define DNA, what is it? So I have written something on the board, you must pay attention on the board. So you must zoom it because others can see it also. So first come here. So DNA, its full form is deoxyribonucleic acid. In the chromosomes it is present up to 30 to 40 percent in chromosomes is present. And what is DNA made up of? This is a question. What is the DNA made up of? So it is made up of billions of nucleotides. Oh, it's made up of billions of nucleotides. What is a nucleotide itself? So I have defined the nucleotide. Nucleotide, it consists of phosphoric acid, H3PO4, deoxyribose sugar, C5H10O5, and nitrogenous bases. Oh. We are clear with them. This is their formula. It's a molecule. This is formula. What are they? They are nothing more. They are nitrogenous bases. So there are kind of, some kinds of them. They are four in number. In the DNA, they are four in number. Adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. We are, they are nitrogenous bases. So we are going to talk about them here. So <coughs> um, for going there, come here. So DNA is double helix in shape, like the spring. Its double helix model was given by uh, Watson and Francis Crick. They gave the double helix model of the DNA. It says, I have not shared it like the original one, but to explain it, it's, it's not by explanation. So these are two strands of the DNA, right? And this middle, they, here are the pairs, bonding between the nitrogenous bases, they they occur in the middle. Uh, phosphoric acid occurs in the, in the at the outside and sugar in the middle. So these nitrogenous bases pair with each other and form a later like structure. So these are two strands and the middle are the nitrogenous bases. So there's a rule. This adenine will always bind to the thymine. So if here is adenine here is adenine to bind to the thymine, T for thymine. So this all is, is, is like it. So adenine binds to the thymine, and if there is thymine, it will bind to the adenine. And cytosine always binds to the guanine. So these are the pairing between these passes. So the distance between two strands, this one and this one, is 20 angstrom. And the distance between these letters, these ones, like I have marked it already, is 0 0.34 nanometer. So as we said about it, we are coming to the Chargaff's rule. This rule explains the method of the pairing of the bases. It says that uh, adenine will always bind to the thymine, as I already told there, in DNA. And in RNA, it will bind to the uracil, because in RNA, Thymine is not present, but in this tree, uracil is present. The number of adenine always equals to the thymine. It is not just for the adenine, but it is also applicable to the cytosine and guanine. The number of cytosine always equals to the number of guanine, and number of guanine always equals to the cytosine. And also here, it, cytosine and thymine are called pyrimidine bases. Pyrimidine bases. Adenine and guanine are called purine bases. Cytosine and thymine have single ring structure. Adenine and guanine have double ring structure. Right? Ring structure. So how to remember it? I was much confused while reading this topic. I could not remember which one has the double ring structure and which one has the single ring structure. So I made a trick. That's very simple. I'm going to tell you and you will never forget it. 